Ladies and gentlemen, as you see, I've been talking about bonds lately. I have a letter that was sent to me back in, I sent the letter out to them in 2022. They responded back to me within about a month. It was an attorney, the deputy attorney for the county, responding back to me telling me it's 360 pages, 35 cents per page, plus this, plus that. And if you're ready to pay for it, and I just, I didn't feel like arguing and going back and forth. And plus, we're working on a new SAP pack. So I forgot about the letter. <laughs> I literally did. Until the problem came up again. So I'm asking Chat GPT. Got to clear up some things because, you know, he likes to be stupid. And, you know, I like to play the stupid game with him too. So let me show you how to ask him for the bond information. Now, you're not looking for the bond policies. You're looking for risk management to file a claim. All you have to do is file a claim with risk management, people. That's all you have to do. You don't need the bond number. You just need to file a claim. You need the name of the person, and you file against the individual. If it's a city worker, you file with the county manager. They will tell you who risk management is. If it's the county, then it's the county manager. They will tell you who risk management is. If it's a state employee, then you file it with the state's risk management. It's just a complaint. You don't need the bond number. If it's a judge that is in the superior or county district court, superior or county court, then you file it with the county supervisor. If it is a judge who is a justice of the peace, you file your complaint with the city manager. They will direct you to whom it's supposed to be filed with. And you always document your constitutionally secured rights and you highlight the fact that these rights cannot be infringed upon. The First Amendment guarantees that there shall be never any infringement on your secured rights. File your complaint. Only bring up constitutional violations. Don't bring up nothing personal. It has to be that they stepped outside their jurisdiction. They have no jurisdiction over my private property. They have no jurisdiction over me as a person. Police officers who give you tickets. Ladies and gentlemen, they're giving you tickets because they're presuming you're operating in commerce. So start filing claims against them for that false presumption. You don't have to rebut their presumption. They have to rebut yours. You just say, oh no, I'm not a citizen. That's all you have to say. Oh no, I'm not a citizen. Go back and look at the Constitution. There was no citizen listed in the Constitution when it was first put together. The Bill of Rights says nothing about citizens. Go ahead. When you get to the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, your rights are reserved and retained. So those secured rights, they can't take them away. It's a non-core matter. The administrative branch of government, the governor, the district attorneys, the attorney general, the police department, and uh, administrative courts have no jurisdiction over your constitutionally secured rights. Your first question in court is, is this a non-core matter? Because I'm here about the non-core matter. I don't know nothing about core matters. I don't do anything in the public. That's all you have to say. You ain't got to say nothing. Is this a non-core matter? I just, I'm here about a non-core matter. I don't do anything in the public. And let them say whatever they want. Is this a non-core matter? I'm here about a non-core matter. I don't do anything in the public. And they say something else stupid. Is this a non-core matter? I'm here about a non-core matter. I don't do anything in the public. And that's all you got to say. That rebuts every presumption. Oh, no, he said I was traveling in public. He says I was engaging in commerce in public, that I was engaging with the public and committing commerce. I was trafficking commerce. And that's a lie. Mm -mm, couldn't have been trafficking commerce. I was minding my own private business. MYOB? Yeah. No, that's not MYOPB. It's MYOB. You need to mind your own business, mother. Okay, I said however I want when it comes to my business. You ain't got no control over how I identify my business. See, that's the whole problem with your whole system in the first place. Y'all trying to sit up here and presume things when y'all don't have the authority to presume it. So stay in your lane.
or I'll write you a ticket, mother. I'm sorry. I apologize. So let's get to this conversation, please. Hold on. One second. Wake up. Wake up. I live in Alameda County, California. And I need to know what the bond statutes are for the state of California. I know it's under them government codes, but I know the government codes. I know it's under them government codes. Codes. But them government codes. are not the only place where the law is written about the requirements for a bond. Come on, after you provide me all 25 of the laws pertaining to bonds for the state of California and the right to file a claim against those bonds, For the state of California, then I'm going to need you to explain exactly why these people have to carry a bond. Period. I don't want no nuances. I don't want no clarifications. Clarifications, comma, I don't want no explanations, comma, I don't want no opinions, comma, I don't want no conjecture, comma, I don't want no caveats, comma, just answer my question exactly in the context in which I asked it, all right? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never bring a 42 USC 1983. You will never bring a 1983. Stay away from that junk. 1983 is not the law. Okay, now let's do this. California code. He's giving me these codes because I gave him those codes. Giving me this code because I gave it to him, but I didn't give him this one. Requirement for joint power agreements to include bonds. Okay, I can live with that. Then bond for peace officers and claims against them. This section right here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just asked it for 25. Now, why did I say 25? Why didn't I say 10 or five? Because I know that it's at least 25 for the state of California. State of California is too big. Too many people, too many officers, too many agents. Too many contractors. You see, it says various public officials, contractors, and other parties. You got lawyers, you got doctors, you got dentists. Lord have mercy. Chiropractors, all of these people have to be bonded. Then you got businesses and banks. So there are at least 25. So you're going to do the same thing. Now watch this. We're going to take this because I got a meeting in a couple of minutes, so I, I can't stay on with y'all. Y'all been taking up all my time. I don't know why y'all be trying to rob me of my time. I ain't do nothing to y'all. Y'all just sit up here and just take all my time. I know, I, I'm going to mind. No, no, I'm going to take my own time. I'm going to take my time back. I'm taking my time back. I'm tired of y'all getting on my last month. You know, sit up here and be taking all my time and don't know what I'm doing. Got myself running in circles. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Feeling like high like a bird up in the sky now. What got me going around in circles? Anyway, California contains laws, contains numerous provisions related to bonds of public officials in various legal proceedings. Here are some key factors. And guess what? This will confirm it, ladies and gentlemen. This will confirm the codes and the laws. That's how you double check your work. 
What are the specific requirements for public official bonds in California? How do master bonds differ from individual bonds for public officials? Now, I want you to understand, sometimes they have a bulk bond. It's given another name, but it's a bulk bond where all of their bonds are included in one bond, a master bond. Public officials are required to have bonds under California law. Which public officials? Let's check this one out. I'm curious. Let's get curious. I kept saying Sylvester for let's get curious, and somebody corrected me yesterday, and he was right. It ain't Sylvester. That was uh, Jermaine Jackson, whose brother Tito died yesterday. Tito gone, y'all. <laughs> Pass me a tissue. Sorry. I'm joking, but not about his death. I'm joking about the Eddie Murphy. Tito, pass me a tissue. Come on now. Get with it. No, I'm I'm actually very sorry. Tito was one of the... Wait, I think Tito was the three T's. I think that was their daddy. So he was one of the ones that everybody liked. Okay? County of California government code requires the treasurers, the county clerks, the auditors, the county clerks, the auditors, the sheriff, tax collectors, tax assessors, district attorneys, recorders, doesn't matter what type of recorder they are, the assessors, the surveyors, superintendents, public administrators, supervisors, state of California official bonds are also required for state officers as prescribed by law to be supported by either the governor or the director of general services, General Mills, and filed with the Secretary of State. Ta-da! So now you can also get their bonds from the Secretary of State. Freedom of Information Act, coupled with a public records request are the equivalent. That's your language. Freedom of Information Act, coupled with a public records request or its equivalent request for information. Any of that statement that I just made, however you want to reformulate it, you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, city officers, uh, city officials are required by city officials, officers to be filed with the city recorder, except where the city recorder's bond, uh, which is to be filed with the city treasurer. You can get all of the information on who has what from the city manager, from the county manager, and from the governor's office, risk management department. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the bonds. Oh, we, we told ChatGPT to ask that answer that question. So let's see what he had to say about why they have to carry a bond. <sighs> the necessity for these bonds is typically to ensure that individuals and entities perform their duties on behalf of the state or the public. Maintain financial responsibility, especially for actions if they harm the public uh, as a result in public harm and liability. Wake up. Wake up. I am not a member of the public, comma, I am a private civilian, comma, so how do these bonds protect my rights, question mark. Stop listening, ladies and gentlemen. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he said something here, and I'm sorry, that's why I was pausing, because he said something. I was kind of surprised. Pay attention. No, I'm going to let him tell it to you guys, because it, it, I, I promise you, to me, it's funny. It's right here. These bonds protect your rights as a private civilian in several ways even though you may not be a member of the public in an official capacity. Not in a member of the public in an One, official capacity? Accountability of public Imagine officials. that. Bonds for public officials, such as those required under California Government Code, eh, Pare 1450-463, ensure that government officers are financially accountable for any wrongful actions or failures to perform their duties. If a public official violates your rights or causes harm, you can file a claim against their bond to seek compensation. 2. Protection against contractor misconduct. Bonds for contractors, such as those required under the California Business and Professions Code, track 7071.6, ensure that contractors comply with their obligations. 
If a contractor causes you harm through negligence or breach of contract, you can file a claim against their bond to recover damages. I'm going to stop it right now because I don't need to do financial all that. Safeguards for private I didn't ask him about that, but I didn't, I didn't specify judges or police officers. Okay, those are officials. Those are public officials. That, remember, they're public officials. They represent the public. They're there to protect the public. I'm not a part of the public. I am private. See, that's why they keep hemming you guys up because you all are out there in the public. Because you let that common phrase become your common phrase. Okay, they created the public, people. There was no public before Congress created the public. And then they created public policy to govern the public. And the Supreme Court in Erie Revel versus Tompkins sat up there and said, we're not under no common law no more. We're under public policy. And people let them get away with that bolt because they didn't fully understand what was going on. And that's how we're here now. You don't believe me? Go do your research on Erie Railroad and what the Supreme Court had to say. And look at how they claim we don't have common law anymore. And that's why I keep highlighting the Seventh Amendment hasn't been admitted, um, changed or augmented in any way. It remains the same to the present day. So no, y'all don't get to sit up here and play these games with me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got a... Um, I got to tell y'all something. I was listening to, well, I'm 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 gonna listen to it like this. We gonna take it on out of here with Gladys Knight and the Pimps. Got a song in my heart. Ooh, tell them, girl.